coming up. Magnets. Hello and welcome back. I'll be rebuilding the generator from the Copper Golem episode, but strong enough to power some devices here on the Matt Yaza channel. I'll start by cutting down this borosilicate tubing on my wet saw. If you go nice and slow, you can get a pretty good cut. And now this tube will become the stator, which is the stationary part of the generator. I'll score and snap off some smaller tubes to connect to the stator, and I'll wind them with coil to create electricity. I'm using hollow tubes this time to fill them with iron to see if it'll help focus the magnetic field. Which is why this generator will be called the Iron Golem. And so my last design was directly based off the electromagnet. As I've been testing and learning more about the electromagnetic force, I've been able to update my understanding and designs to achieve better results. And so electromagnetism falls within the range of quantum physics, which is the science of comparing and measuring the smallest particles and phenomena. Some of which are so small, they can't be directly observed with the human eye. And so it's actually pretty natural to be misunderstood or confused when discussing this field. In fact, electricity and magnetism were considered completely separate forces for a long time. It wasn't until we found electricity applied to a conductive wire creates a magnetic field. And subsequently, when a magnetic field is passed through a conductive wire, it creates electricity. And so both forces are essentially two sides of the same coin. A simple analogy might be a ski boat or wake boat rushing down a calm river. It will begin to create waves behind it called the wake, which not only follow the boat, but propagate perpendicular towards the banks of the river. Any other boats tied up along the banks will begin to react to this motion of the waves. And so the boats represent electrons, while the waves represent magnetism. And now the main difference with alternating current is that the boat wouldn't actually be moving down the river. Instead, it would be more stationary going forward and backwards a small ways. And the reason for this alternating power is the north and south poles of the magnet passes over the same wire, continually creating opposite charges. This problem can be solved multiple ways. You can wire it to reverse the direction every half turn, building what's called a commutator. You can use a rectifier diode, which will cause the power to pass only in one direction, canceling out the opposite charge. You can also wire four of those diodes together and create a bridge rectifier, which can redirect that opposite charge to the opposite end of the generator. It's like pushing the power in through the front door and then going around back and pulling the power out through the back door. And now it's time to run the test. And so without the iron nails, I'm getting around 100 millivolts. Roughly the same as the copper golem. I'll add the dull nails on both sides and carefully yeah, insert it. the magnet. And so it's very difficult to compare the oh. two. I can't tell if it's just the magnetic attraction to the nails propelling the rotor. The copper golem didn't have this resistance and spun freely. Whoa, whoa. It's harder to turn, but uh. I don't think I'm turning it as far. I'm seeing about 200 millivolts, which is the highest so far. Let's try the rectifier bridge to see what happens. It looks like without the iron, it's producing barely any power. 
There might be a minimum voltage we have to reach before we can push through the bridge. A voltage drop. But now with the nails, it's doing really well. I'm afraid this won't be enough for an LED. And without the nails, it's not working at all. But with nails... I saw something. Whoa. Yes. Look at that. I was mistaken. I guess it will work after all. Only a red LED though, which needs two volts. And so I thought I would rewire it with fender washers. The same kind I used in the zinc acid battery video. And it seems to be doing worse than the copper golem. I think I'll have to brush up on my basics before I rebuild it again. It's been over a year before I've done anything like this. As you can see, the power is very strong, but the range is pretty weak. I can extend that range by conducting it through another object made of iron. I can even carefully remove the magnet and distance it away, allowing the other two objects to remain entangled. And once the nail I'm holding loses enough power, it drops. And so the magnet basically turns the other two nails into magnets themselves. However, when physically connected, they essentially act more as one giant magnet. The north side of the magnetic field seems to travel through both nails before returning to the south side of the neodymium magnet. I can demonstrate this by attaching a metal washer to one side of the magnet and then dangling two nails attached separately to the bottom of that. You'll see as I bring one of the nails towards the other, it actually repels away. Both nails are flowing with the same polarity of magnetism. That flow can't naturally go backwards against itself. And so to get back to the magnet, it has to flow out and around the metal objects. And so by attaching some more nails to the other side of the magnet, I can conduct this flow into a big loop. As I understand it, both the north and south poles originate from the same phenomena. When interacting with an external magnetic field or electric current, iron atoms can develop something known as a magnetic moment. When multiple atoms align their microscopic moments in the same direction, you'll get the macroscopic effect of magnetism. And now this next test actually taught me a lot and pointed me in the right direction. I started out with about 20 millivolts and as I'm moving the coil away, the power drops exponentially. I knew that would happen, but not this quickly. Now that I'm seeing less than two millivolts, I'm gonna put back in the nail. Let's see what happens. I see a quick jump in power. We're almost at the two digit mark already. And so the nail definitely helps extend the field outward. However, there's a noticeable resistance to the rotation from the magnetic attraction of the magnet to the nail. The power is increasing again as we get closer towards the core. And so this tells me without the nails, the majority of the coil is wasted as the core can't reach that far out. And so I decided to wire up four additional nails and then wire all six coils into a series. And now I'm making about 500 millivolts, which is two and a half times more than what I had before. So this is looking pretty good. Oh yeah, that's definitely brighter than before, but it doesn't stay on very long. It's just a sudden flash. So I'm thinking I'll add a capacitor it's similar to a battery, except instead of a chemical reaction to generate power, it uses metal plates. These plates can slowly build an electrostatic charge, which can be delivered the moment they're connected with a conductor. It's a bit similar to getting shocked by a grocery cart or the outside oh, of a cool. vehicle after it's been driving around for a while. And so you have to be careful working with larger capacitors as you can be shocked with quite a bit of power. 
And it looks like it's working. It's not rapidly blinking anymore, but it might be dumping all the power once we meet that voltage drop. So I'm gonna add in a 50 ohm resistor. This will restrict the flow to the LED so it doesn't get flooded. Oh wow, that's actually pretty cool. It feels good to be able to generate your own power. But now I need to do one last test. I want to use electromagnetism to create energy and then use that energy to create more magnetism in order to demonstrate how related the two phenomena are. I bent a nail to wind up a horseshoe shaped magnet. I need to keep winding in the same clockwise motion or it won't be as powerful. But this is one of the most powerful magnet shapes as it brings both poles closely together. I'll start out with three volts. Oh, and there we go. It looks like it's working. I'm hitting it with a quick burst of power from three of my largest capacitors wired in parallel. And it seems to have permanently magnetized the nail. I wanna thank you for joining me on this energizing journey. It's been over four years since I did my first magnetic experiment video. I've learned a lot since then, and I hope I've been able to share some of that knowledge with you as well. From magnetism to electricity, back to magnetism, this completes the adventure. And so let's briefly look Coming back up. to see how it Magnets. all started. Every single time, it seemed like the force or that field was coming off almost on that left side and then coming around. It's very, very interesting. Oh, look at that. And we got magnetism. Wow, look at that. All right, look at that. It's working. It looks like the spikes are kind of waving back and forth as I rotate the magnet. Running a test of rubbing the magnets perpendicular and parallel with the coils to see which one would produce the most power. I started with a simple vessel filled with iron filings to a device that can generate power. I'm really curious and excited to find out where this is going to lead. You can comment with any scientific questions, but make sure to share this video as well. That way others may find their way to the mesmerizingly mysterious Matt Yasa channel.